happens when more than 40 of the world's most fascinating makers, doers and thought leaders across science, tech, the arts and social enterprise converge in one iconic venue in London? And what if I told you that this list includes a sunstorm scientist, an irrationality analyst and moonshot expert? Well, it certainly packs a room like no other. Helen and I are at another edition of the annual Wired Summit from where we're taking in all the action. Yes, and once again, the event is brought to audiences in association with Telefonica. Given that the summit is bringing together some of the finest minds in the industry, for this edition of Digital Futures, we wanted to get their thoughts on how digitalisation is driving economic growth and how we can all ensure the opportunity is over to everyone. Absolutely. Helen and I are also going to get their take on what single futuristic technology they're currently feeling most buzzed about in terms of its potential to drive meaningful social impact and provide everyday citizens with a fulfilling digital life. Over to them. So I think a technology that will have a huge uh, social impact is artificial intelligence. Um, learning algorithms that can detect diseases, can detect cancers and um, basically makes it easier for hospitals and doctors to give preventive preventable measures. Artificial intelligence will be very relevant in the future and we, we are going to, to face a lot of new challenges about how to use that power, that artificial intelligence in benefit for our societies and, and, and not uh, against the society. There are so many different technologies, exponential technologies that are coming together and I think the biggest impact will come as a cross section of a lot of them. But the two that I'm particularly very excited about, one is Internet of Things, which is uh, my background and what I'm working on. Uh, but the uh, second technology that I'm very interested in, that I think it will be transformational in many different dimensions, is 3D printing, the additive printing concept. I believe machine learning and artificial intelligence has a large role to play in how you wrap technology around people's lives. For digital technologies, I think to be more widely adopted and inclusive, I think it needs to feel less like a technology and more just like a tool. As an example, the Big Bang Theory series in which we got Sheldon, we got Leonard, we got Rajit, we got Wolowitz that at least has a master degree, and then we got Penny. We used to create technology for geeks, but we forget Penny, and we need to create technology for Penny. One of the things technology does uh, is it, it tends to make information more and more free. You know, the internet has made uh, information, music, media, freer and freer and more widely distributed. Well, part of the benefit of that is that that information itself includes the benefits that have typically come from technology. If we go to the idea of a school, it's really not changed in the last hundred years. Sure, you might have iPads, sure, you might have interactive whiteboards, but it's still all on this effectively a factory line to this conclusion, which is your job. And that still needs to change. Digital needs to be integrated. I guess the way we introduce people to technology is by having really good journalism. So you're not putting sensationalist headlines, you're not taking something a researcher's saying and then giving it a really dramatic spin, because that genuinely affects how um, the public sees technology. Regulation has to catch up to the online world. Uh, things like, uh, you know, views around encryption and so on and so forth. Second is infrastructure or deployment of infrastructure, including, you know, spectrum for telcos has to become a lot more cheaper and affordable. So, you know, you can sort of bring a billion people onto things like 4G or very big data pipes. I'm very excited about the digital economy, um, especially as you think about internet and the, the amount of people that's going to go on the internet for the first time um, in the next coming years and how that sort of opens minds um, and, and the things that it makes it easier for a lot of people. Today, with the cost of things, for example, being low enough, VR is a great example of this, the cost being so low that everyone worldwide can buy one of you know, each of these new gadgets, so to speak. The potential, this means the potential impact on us uh, is going to continue to be immensely profitable. If there's a way you can wrap technology around people, people take it. There's no better time to be alive because there's so much change in technology happening with machine learning, AI, 4G, you know, four or five billion smartphones that can be repackaged in so many ways to sort of solve so many problems. 
So what we've witnessed in terms of advancement of the digital revolution, it has been very limited in its impact today and mostly focused in developing countries, even in developing countries, a small segment of the population. And what uh, needs to happen and when we will see the true benefit if when it becomes open and inclusive. We are facing a new world. We are excited about a lot of new technologies. Have we seen how technology is part of every single part of our lives? So we've seen today that technology is part of our education, our work, the industries, the everything is is uh, is using technology because it's giving us a, a, a great power.